Being a Major League Baseball player is more dangerous than ever, which is ironic because this used to be legal. Players used to come home like this and nobody got thrown out of the game. Stadiums had concrete walls, no netting to protect fans, and no dugout fences. Yet somehow, more players are getting injured today than ever before. Teams used to be so bad at treating injuries that the Reds once sent a pitcher to the dentist because his arm hurt. He got a tooth pulled, but his arm still hurt. Today's pitchers are throwing less pitches, doing more arm care, and getting the best medical care in the world. But there have been more Tommy John surgeries in the past year than the entire decade of the 80s. Hitters are wearing more elbow guards, face guards, and helmets, but are getting hit, hit in the face, and injured from it more than ever before. A pitcher once had his season and arguably his career ruined because he hurt his arm from playing too much Guitar Hero. Moises Alou got injured after accidentally running over his son with his bike, and multiple players have been injured from sneezing. These injuries were real, but fake injuries are also at an all-time high. According to one player, his team told him if he didn't fake an injury, he would be cut from the team, and this is a new strategy being used across the league. MLB is starting to implement new equipment and new rules to solve their injury problem, but they've been trying to make baseball safer for decades. Unfortunately for them, plays like this can still occur. Going, going. Oh my God. Unlike most sports in baseball, the out-of-play area is separated by a wall that is still in play, which has caused a safety hazard for over a century. Early MLB stadiums had walls that were concrete. Pete Reiser fractured his skull running into a wall, was temporarily paralyzed from running into a different wall, and fractured his skull a second time after running into a third wall. MLB gradually switched to chain link fences, which were also dangerous. Willie Mays got knocked out cold while colliding with a chain link fence on this play and still somehow caught the ball. Eventually, they switched to padded walls, which also had problems. Turner Ward completely smashed through one of these on this play and still managed to throw the ball in. Now the walls are almost all padded and secured, except for a few chain link bullpen fences and scoreboards, which players do occasionally run face first into. MLB has a massive incentive to invest in safety like this because owners lose millions of dollars paying injured players every year. In 1998, teams paid $116 million in salary to injured players who couldn't even play. In 2021, that number went up to an insane $871 million. That is a 750% increase during a stretch where the average salary increased around 300%. So owners are losing more money than ever due to injuries, and when this happens, things usually change, which is why you can no longer do this. In the 1977 ALCS, Hal McRae broke up a double play by running right through the bag and trucking Willie Randolph, allowing the run to score. Score. Two days later, Craig Nettles didn't even try to slide and ran over Frank Wright to break up another double play. George Brett got Nettles back the next day after sliding into third and pushing him. Nettles responded by kicking him in the face and the two teams started a fight. All three of these plays were deemed completely legal and not a single player got suspended. You used to be able to slide into a bag any way you wanted until this happened in the 2015 NLCS. With the tying run on third, Howie Kendrick hit a soft ground ball to second. Stopping this double play would tie the game, so Chase Utley slid extremely hard, breaking up the double play, and also breaking Ruben Tejada's leg. After appealing the initial suspension, MLB ruled this was a completely legal slide, but Tejada was never the same player again, and the backlash from across the league led MLB to completely outlaw the takeout slide, unless the fielder was directly in the way of the back. MLB's goal was to stop collisions on the base pass. They no longer wanted to see plays like this. In 2006, Brian Anderson hit a fly ball to left. AJ Pruszynski tagged up, ran home, and absolutely destroyed Michael Barrett. He punched Pruszynski in the face and the bench is cleared. Michael Barrett thought this play was dirty because he didn't even have the ball yet. However, this slide was completely legal until this happened in 2011. Scott Cousins tagged up on a fly ball, came home, and ran over Buster Posey to score the go-ahead run. Posey missed the rest of the season and even though this play was also completely legal and accepted throughout baseball history, 
Cousins got death threats, and the Giants GM even said, quote, if he doesn't play another day in the big leagues, I think we'll all be happy. A few years later, MLB implemented what is known as the Buster Posey rule, which banned catchers from blocking the plate without the ball and runners from going out of their way to run over catchers, essentially banning any collision at the plate. By banning this, MLB saw a 45% drop in injuries caused by home plate collisions, and by banning taking out a runner at second base, they saw a 36% decrease in injuries due to collisions at second. However, the number of injuries overall have increased dramatically since these rules were implemented. Position players get hurt sliding more than any other play. Sliding injuries are most likely to occur during slides into second base or into home, and are nearly twice as likely to happen when sliding head first. Sliding feet first used to be a way runners could intimidate fielders, making them more hesitant to block a bag or risk getting spiked. But since taking out fielders has been eliminated from the game, there's way less incentive to do it, causing more head first slides and more injuries. Banning collisions is only one of several reasons head first slides are occurring more frequently, but this shows that even rules that make some players safer have unintended consequences that make the game more dangerous to others. But baseball has come a long way because until until somewhat recently, stadiums were essentially death traps. Dugouts didn't have protective fences. Players often fell into them and got hit by foul balls. In 1999, Mo Vaughn fell into a dugout trying to make a catch and hurt his ankle. The LA Times wrote, quote, what's next? Protective nets in the dugout? And that is exactly what happened. Dugouts are now protected by a railing. Players still fall into them while trying to make catches and get hit by flying bats and balls occasionally, but it is nowhere near as dangerous as stadiums like the Oakland Coliseum, which for some reason, to this day, does not have dugout railing. MLB cared so little about safety in the early 1900s, if there was a sellout, teams would literally put fans on the field to watch. Fans would hold a rope in the outfield to form a new fence. Hitting a ball past this rope resulted in a ground rule triple. In the 1903 World Series, there were 17 ground rule triples. Yankee Stadium used to have stone monuments and a flagpole in the outfield that were in play. They also had a rubber drain that was in play in the middle of right field. In the 1951 World Series, Mickey Mantle tripped on it, tore ligaments in his knee, had to be carted off the field and played 17 more seasons with a torn ACL that was never repaired. As recently as the 70s, throwing things on the field happened so often that umpires sometimes didn't even stop the game and continued playing with debris on the field. Phillies fans threw so many things at Dick Allen that in 1969, he started wearing a batting helmet while he played in the infield. MLB didn't start requiring hitters to wear helmets until two years later in 1969. 1971. Dave Parker took this rule change to another level. After a cheek injury, he wore a football helmet and even a hockey mask to the plate during games. Protective equipment for hitters has evolved into elbow guards, shin guards, face guards, and better helmets. Despite this, hitting is more dangerous than ever because batters are getting hit and hit in the face at a higher rate than any time in baseball history. And hitters are getting tired of it. Just ask the Angels who started the biggest brawl of the year after Justin Upton was hit in the head by Michael Lorenzen. This was a complete accident, but later that month, after Mike Trout saw two pitches go by his head, he speculated that these could have been on purpose, also saying that even if they weren't, pitchers who don't have good enough control to throw inside without hitting someone in the face probably shouldn't do it at all. The Angels threw near Julio Rodriguez's head the next day, which caused a back and forth, and when they hit Jesse Winker later in the game, things got ugly. The bad part for MLB is that this increase of batters getting hit is largely by design. Teams are having pitchers throw more breaking balls than ever, which are more likely to slip out of a pitcher's hand and hit a batter. When they do throw fastballs, they aim them high in the zone or on the inside corner more than ever before, causing more pitches near batters' heads and hands. Teams have found that pitchers Pitchers with more velocity and pitch movement are more valuable than pitchers who just have good control, meaning that there are a ton of pitchers with nasty sliders and 100 mile per hour fastballs who are being told to throw high inside because they are the hardest pitchers to hit. Unfortunately, they're also the ones who are most likely to hit a batter. The last full Major League season had 2,112 hit by pitches, which is an all time high. And this study found from 2011 to 2014, one out of every 21.7 hit by pitches resulted in an injury. Also finding that the fastball 
faster the pitch was, the more likely an injury would occur. Average fastball velocity has increased since then, so there's a good chance this rate is even higher now. But what is arguably more concerning is that nearly one out of every three pitches that hits a batter in the head causes an injury. And until the high fastball stops being effective, this trend will be tough to stop. But MLB is trying. This offseason, the league tried to implement a rule that automatically ejected any pitcher who hit a batter in the head, regardless of if it was on purpose, as well as a hit by pitch point system. Each hit by pitch would count for a certain amount of points, depending on where it hit the batter. Once a pitcher passed a certain amount of points, they would be immediately ejected. The players have rejected both of these rule changes, and this is not the only time players have rejected things that made them safer. In 2009, MLB helmets supposedly only protected them from pitches going up to 70 miles per hour. The the average fastball was 91 miles per hour, so Rawlings introduced a new helmet that protected against a 100 mile per hour pitch, but barely anyone wore it because they were too big and looked weird. Following an influx of line drives hitting pitchers in the head, MLB offered a similar option for pitchers. Brandon McCarthy's may have been the scariest. He required emergency surgery and later had a seizure due to a line drive. MLB offered pitchers this hat that Alex Torres wore, but he was probably the only one who ever wore this hat for obvious reasons. More hats and helmets with extra protection have been introduced since, which are more popular and a lot less noticeable. But despite all of these changes that have improved player safety, the amount of league-wide days spent on the IL has gone from 31,000 in 2017 to 48,000 in 2021. That is a 65% increase in only five seasons, and a lot of these injuries are actually fake. But before we get to that, a word from today's sponsor. Factor is a meal delivery service that sends fresh, gourmet, never frozen meals directly to your door. Factor is delicious and they have something for everyone, no matter what your diet is. They have keto meals, calorie smart meals, chef choice meals, meat options, seafood options, and vegan options that all come directly to your house. Factor offers a rotating weekly menu that has 25 plus meal options that you can pick from so you will never have something you don't want to eat. I'm eating Factor while making this video right now because I love it. It cuts time on going to the store, cuts time on cooking, cuts time on cleaning, and it tastes amazing. So if you want to eat healthy and do it quickly, head to go.factor75.com slash baseball doesn't 130 and use code baseball doesn't 130 to get $130 off your next six boxes. Yes, a $130 discount. And all you have to do is head to go.factor75.com slash baseball doesn't 130 and use code baseball doesn't 130 today. In 2017, MLB decreased the minimum number of days an injured player had to sit out from 15 days to 10 days. Teams can manipulate this by diagnosing a starting pitcher with an injury they don't have and only lose them for one start. This is illegal. However, it's pretty hard to tell which injuries are real and which are not. Jose Cardinal once had to miss a game because he said there was a cricket in his hotel room that kept him awake all night. Another time, he missed a game because he claimed his eyelid wouldn't close. As ridiculous as this sounds, both of these injuries were real. It was reported that Joe Zamaya hurt his shoulder and had to get surgery because he played too much Guitar Hero. This was also real, and Guitar Hero even put him in the credits for Guitar Hero 2, saying he, quote, had it coming. Danny McLean once went on the injured list because he said his foot fell asleep while watching TV. He stood up too fast, stubbed it, and dislocated his toes. This was fake. In reality, he was connected to the mob and owed famous gangster Tony Jagaloni money. Jagaloni smashed his toes as punishment, causing him to go on the disabled list. Glenn Allen Hill had to go on the DL because he claimed he was afraid of spiders. He had a dream about spiders, which scared him so much, he slept walked onto a glass table and shattered it. He then proceeded to fall down his stairs while he was asleep. This was a true story. Ross Stripling once went on the IL with lower body fatigue. According to him, this was completely fake. Another anonymous veteran pitcher says he was given the option to either fake an injury or be released. This strategy allows teams to replace underperforming players by putting them on the injured list. That way, they don't have to release them. Since they're still technically on the team, if their replacement gets hurt in the future, they can just take them off the IL and pretend the fake injury healed. 
Teams will also do this for pitchers who they think have thrown too many innings. By putting them on the IL, they don't have to go back to the minors or be released, and can stay with the team and pitch again later in the season. Even though they're not really injured, this is done to prevent future injuries like Tommy John surgery, which has happened more times in the past year than in the entire decade of the 90s. The league has responded to this epidemic with lower pitch counts, but this arguably is making things worse, because pitchers used to throw way more innings with way less rest and got injured way less frequently. Old Haas Radburn threw more complete games in a single season than the entire league combined in 2021. The Brooklyn Robins and the Boston Braves once played a 26 inning game and both starting pitchers pitched every single inning. Nolan Ryan once threw 235 pitches in one game. That is more than two times higher than Sandy Alcantara's average pitch count who leads the entire league with an average of 102 pitches per game. Pitchers in past eras were used to throwing a lot of pitches so they could do it without adding too much risk. But research shows that throwing more pitches does increase risk of injury, especially if pitchers aren't used to it. The Rangers once let Jose Canseco, who was an outfielder, pitch during a blowout. Even though he only threw a single inning, he tore his UCL and had to get Tommy John. The only way to throw a lot of pitches without having a high injury risk is to get used to throwing a lot of pitches. The only way to do that is to throw more pitches, which also increases your injury risk. This is why solving elbow injuries for MLB has been so hard and has made Tommy John surgery the number one most damaging injury in the sport. Not only because it happens so frequently, but because it takes forever to heal and rushing a pitcher back can be even more catastrophic. Dave Dravecki once had to get a cancerous tumor removed from his arm. He survived and against all odds and the doctor's orders, he returned in less than a year. In his second start back, he snapped his arm so bad it reportedly could be heard throughout the stadium. He was out for the season, but a few months later, while celebrating with his team, he broke his arm again. And as bad as this was, the doctors did an x-ray on it and discovered his cancer returned ending his baseball career forever. Tommy John has an 84% success rate, but pitchers take 12 to 18 months to return from it to prevent things like this. And teams are being extremely cautious with their pitchers, but perhaps the biggest factor in elbow injuries is the thing that teams are promoting the most. Research finds that higher velocity pitchers have the highest chance of Tommy John because higher velocity usually means more torque on the arm. But a pitcher who tries his hardest to throw 95 often puts more torque on their arm than a pitcher who can throw 100 with ease. Old Haas Radburn probably threw in the 80s and likely rarely threw a pitch as hard as he could because he knew he was expected to throw the entire game, which is why he could throw 1 million pitches without getting hurt. But today, MLB values pitchers with velocity more than anything. So pitchers are trying their hardest to throw their hardest as frequently as possible, putting them, the hitters, and the entire league in more danger than ever before.